Welcome, dear viewers, to our series visit today. And thank you very much for your numerous letters. I would like to devote today's program to a problem because I received an email from Hadron. Hadron is 45 years old. Hadron, you have two children, you are a single parent and believe me. I know what that means. Not because I've experienced it, but because I know the incredible stories of people and great mothers. And you write that you have had difficulty getting out of bed in the morning for a long time. I can imagine that a mother has always to be on the ball. You wrote that you actually sleep well, fall asleep exhausted and deeply, but that you don't feel like you've had enough sleep in the morning. You have an unbelievable urge for salty and sweet things. You show signs that your tolerance to stress has decreased. It's called stress intolerance. The normal is too much for me. A little is slowly becoming too much for me. This is a serious symptom. You are quickly irritated, which you did not know from yourself. You get angry sometimes. You have lost your tolerance. And you have the impression that the nerves that used to be like tightropes are suddenly like twine that you just have to tap. There are people whose nerves are so on the edge that maybe you just say a word or look at them and the tears roll down. This is also a very important observation. You feel that you get into an energy deficit between 3 and 4 in the afternoon and of course you also observe that all of this within the last year and a half, and you went through quite an odyssey, is not understood. And today you are diagnosed as so-called psychosomatically burdened, stress-induced. That's no problem at all. But you wonder what can I do? And I have to tell you that we, as doctors, if we don't know something. Then we can't see it then we can't understand it either. And we don't know that. This means that we will of course speak very quickly of a psychosomatic stress disorder, but we already hear about a so-called Morbus Addison during our studies. This is severe, severe adrenal insufficiency, but functional weakness, we don't hear anything about a functional or hormonal weakness. And it's not the big hit in therapy either, or could be. That's why, I think, people don't really look into this matter, because this algorithm between illnesses needs therapy, the therapy needs the illness, can of course be a functional event, that is an end of a cascade of incredible things who are out of balance. That can't be packed into a normal medical grid. And if you now talk about a so called chronically exhausted or tired, then you should really briefly explain again why we are all hormonally controlled. Of course, we are even more hormonally controlled during puberty, but the hormones are actually so-called signal messengers. That comes from hormone. Hormone was the word in Greek. And that means it's the drivers, they are the ones who excite, who activate, but they also break but also do not give the signal for such and such and such a function.
So, in ancient Greek, it was already recognized back then that hormones influence every single cell between the head and the body. And a millionth of a gram in a liter of blood is enough to get this effect. So hormones are of course only very small signal transmitters, but of incredible importance, like everything in life. It's not the big stuff. It's the little things that make life worth living and it's the things that cannot be bought, that are even more valuable. And so it is with the hormones. But in order to be able to form hormones sufficiently and also keep major metabolic processes in balance, it is very important that these messenger substances are sufficiently formed in our glandular organs. That means, these glandular organs are responsible for always providing what the body needs. In the thyroid, in the pancreas, also in our hormone gonads, our ovaries, in the testicles and so on. That means it's not 100% constant giving of these signal and messenger substances, but only if, for example, there is a pregnancy, a particularly large amount is produced. If I'm right before the period, I need more progesterone to start my period. Everything is properly controlled down to the last detail. There is one exception. And those are the stress hormones. The stress hormones are produced by the adrenal glands and they have top priority. So if the body is even close to getting into a stress or fight or flight situation, everything else is no longer interesting, then it produces stress hormones because of course it has a lot to do with metabolic functions, circulatory functions. Of survival options, the whole sugar metabolism is transferred to the muscles, so I'm in fight-flight mode and so on. But it's all coordinated and hormones have a say in how my sleep works, if I'm hungry, if I'm thirsty, in weight regulation, my feelings, my thoughts. My body temperature, everything is hormonally controlled. And the control center is in the head, that's the hypothalamus, so that's a fingertip-sized little gland which in turn correlates with the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland sits here in front and of course regulates a lot of processes. It has direct contact with the thyroid gland, which has direct contact with the adrenal glands. The pituitary gland actually now has a final word on our entire condition, or which then filters information from the hypothalamus again. And while the hypothalamus naturally has the position of queen, because it knows everything and it in turn passes on the relevant information, the thyroid is then, of course, a subordinate gland to the thalamus. But all the other glands, pancreas, thyroid, gonads, and so on are of course all vital and necessary for survival. And these symptoms that you have described to me are not the only thing. I mean, there's a lot more to come. My psyche can slip too. I can get depressed. I can also develop depressive moods. It would also be like that for me if I couldn't handle life anymore and if I notice that my energy is no longer sufficient to even manage normal everyday life. So I would be anything but happy and would mess around when life is not just child's play. No, it hasn't been for a long time. And this feeling of being burned out, to have this loss of energy in the afternoon as well, 
as you describe. Also this, I would like to skip a meal, but it is not possible. Then I get so hungry. These are all very important indications, which of course show that you are slowly slipping into an energetic deficit. And now you have to understand that. And now, of course, I would like to explain to you again today what you are now doing on your own, if on the other hand you may not have the support at the moment or what you should do. You can do it yourself and then, of course, ultimately discussing what you should do with a medical colleague. The adrenal glands are almost the smallest glands. They sit like a small polar cap on top of the kidneys and they are responsible of course in the adrenal medulla to produce norepinephrine, also adrenaline. You know, these are our stress hormones. High adrenaline. When I'm riding a roller coaster like this or when I'm waiting for my friend and I'm excited and my heart rate goes over 180. That's adrenaline, so adrenaline isn't controlled by what I really want right now, but by the feeling it triggers in me. And a good feeling can also pump up adrenaline. We're talking about eustress, that's something good, something positive. Even an athlete at the starting block will not stand there and say, oh, if I can do this. No, they believe in themselves and builds themselves up and because of this feeling of wanting to win, of course also an adrenaline rush that provides them with everything so that they might be the first to cross the finish line. These are all things made by the adrenal glands that are controlled because our feelings perceive it. The adrenal cortex, so you have a marrow and a cortex, is then again responsible for these stress hormones, especially cortisol. Cortisone and also DHA, dihydroandesterone, that is the pre-hormone from which estrogen and also testosterone is made and also the aldosterone. That means, this release of these hormones takes place via the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system works unconsciously. And unconscious means it doesn't do what it wants, never. You can rely on the autonomic nervous system 1000% to steer and guide you adaptively in every situation. And this is important to understand. Because if namely the autonomic nervous system signals one day, five days, fifty days, five months, maybe five years that this mom has to be present, this mom has to deal with this and that, this mom has to think for three children or two children and do everything, then you should actually be allowed to understand today that the body may sometimes no longer be able to react adequately, because it has saved over the years, to serve you and it has now come to an exhaustion. It's not a new disease, it's not a psychosomatic problem, it's quite a problem that affects all areas of my body, but it is something. You can get out of. It's not a reason to lose faith, no longer to handle life tomorrow or on this basis maybe provoke a new problem tomorrow. weakness does something to me. And the weakness makes that, of course, due to my emotional stress, and there are also divorces between married couples, they stay and always meet at eye level. But there are others who are waging divorce battle. There is existential fear, there is mental stress, of course there is overwork stress, there are financial problems, there is perhaps the loss, so every person has their own different backgrounds. 
But the fact is always that when you go through these higher achievements that you expect of your body and the balance and regeneration at night are no longer sufficient. And there are those who want to be perfect which of course is the absolute worst thing because they are always raising the bar for themselves. They get into this permanent stress and the body in its selfless adjustment does that for a long time, until you get a break somehow. And you got this break and those who don't get it, they drive it into the wall and are confronted with a terrible diagnosis. So maybe it's all a bit understandable somewhere now to turn yourself into this loving own hands tomorrow. I don't know now how old the kids are. All I know is that you're in your mid-forties. I could imagine that they are in puberty, that there are new time management possibilities. Anyway. I don't want to be allowed to speculate at all. I just want to say that besides these many great mental, psychological factors, of course, we also have really pure stress factors for such processes, such as drinking a lot of coffee now. This is of course a stimulator for the sympathetic nervous system that we keep developing infections that cause us stress. We're sick, lack of sleep, we're really eating too much sugar now. I don't want to expand on all of that now, but I think the basic message is now simply recognized. And now it's really important that you center yourself. To understand that you need rest and that you give your body time to pick up its old rhythm again. And for an adrenal weakness too. Be diagnosed, it may now be important that you arrange a daily cortisol profile. This is a saliva test. That's four to five different saliva samples a day. And both the Ganziman Laboratory and the Biovis Laboratory in Germany can send this shipping set to you. And then you can see exactly how I get up in the morning. So the highest cortisol level is in the morning. That's why people who take cortisol, so prednisolone for example, take it in the morning between 6 and 8 o'clock because the physiological level is highest in the morning. But it is also important how does my cortisol level behave in the evening? How does it behave at noon or in the afternoon? These are things, a daily cortisol profile and also DHA, this pre-hormone for estrogen and testosterone, really should be measured in different saliva samples. These two values have an incredibly large effect in returning you to stability tomorrow. Because both processes play a key role in making the energies better available to you tomorrow. This is of course very important from the point of view of the hormone profile. If testosterone slips away, if estrogen slips away from you, then it clearly has an impact on the hormonal system, but also on all these symptoms which you are now describing. Why are men always so solid as a rock? Because they have high testosterone. And the DHA for example, that's something that's already going down slowly after the age of 40, so that we, by reason, by nature, are determined not have more children.
This is irresponsible for nature, that we have children after 50 years. And it is then normal for this hormone reduction balanced in a certain area is quite sufficient to also accompany the phase of the human being, which then goes into a very quiet, slow decline. Life doesn't invest in the ordeal at all in this phase. Life invests all the strength until offspring is secured. And we have to keep these reserves for tomorrow, today, but we don't have to push them up either. But you've lost the normal. And then when you have these hormonal levels, then of course there is the next step, how much can I do now in addition to very, very good stress management, this is of course relevant now. And that must be. I can't continue in this, shall I say, tension loop. I have to try to take myself out. And on the other hand, but how can I counteract this hormonal deficit here? And I'm not always the one who always thinks about substitution. If you make time for example. Every day just. 20, 25 minutes to do the 5 Tibetans, then you come into an incredible inner center and have taken the whole neuroendocrine stress axis, to get into balance here within the framework of a new physiological re-regenerative capacity. It may not be enough at all, but DJ, I can already build a bridge, which you will immediately notice how these things then also apply to balance your own physical well-being. But on the other hand, be very, very cautious about it, dose it in small doses. And there are very, very few instances when I see cortisone or cortisol production is almost at a standstill that I, too, with a very, very low level, never crossing the physiological necessity of the body, but also because sometimes I build a bridge and use the other time for strengthening the adrenal glands again for example with phytocortal drops or with many other things that support the adrenal glands. The palate is really incredibly large. But this is very important. And the other thing is, I would like to say at this point, please have both laboratories measure the nitrosative stress and the oxidative stress. These are urine samples and also laboratory samples. But here you see how is the cell energy mitochondrial performance. And mitochondrial performance means can my cells still produce enough energy. If the adrenal glands on the one hand are exhausted over the years because they can no longer keep up and settle on a slow, lower level, then it is one thing. But the other thing is of course that there is also such a high level of nitrosative stress in the adrenal glands themselves, which affects the cellular provision of energy and you are exhausted in your production output like everyone else. And these are all things that can be rolled back, that can be rebuilt. Because your way way too young for that and you can get out of this valley of life again tomorrow. I can only give you the way, that maybe when you go to bed at night, have another late snack. And with late snack I mean that what keeps you from sleeping is sometimes also hunger pangs, that you then really have the blood sugar regulation, which is also subject to the adrenal glands, really in your sight and then eat a slice of wholemeal bread just with butter, maybe a little more salt in the evening. You just get through the day because insulin is the antagonist of cortisol. 
And when cortisol is depleted and insulin is spiking at the moment then it's almost like hypoglycemia. And that's why you can of course observe these sleep phases very well. On the other hand, if you can't sleep well, make sure serotonin can also be measured in urine. Serotonin becomes melatonin, our main antioxidant, which detoxifies the brain at night. But our sleep-wake cycle is regulated by melatonin. And that too can be a valuable bridge, to keep the night phases better, to give your brain more energy and of course that. Just balance these things out better. Yes, I hope I could help you a bit with that. This is a big topic. So just to say burnout, I have only encountered this clinical picture for no more than 12, 13 years in my opinion. I've never experienced it in this form before. But I see that there is a multi-causality that must and can be counteracted. And the first step is in your hands here, first to understand a solution-oriented, therapeutic effect. And I believe that in this moment, tomorrow you will also be able to face life with greater mindfulness. You can't do that as a mother of two or three children. And then to go to a next phase, which accompanies you with a lot of momentum and strength and Schwader Viva. In this spirit, many thanks to all of you. For any further questions, for any further worries, for any further advice you need from a holistic point of view please send it to visity at qs24.tv. With this in mind, I wish you all a very, very wonderful week and I am actually already looking forward to the next time. And until then all the best. Thanks. Thanks.